Hey guys, it is Sunday, the 10th of September. I just got doing them. I did a bunch of sharpening actually. Finished the straight razor. Um, once again, forgot to do it before and after. I keep meaning to do that. This did not have a tip. Uh, my friend Matt bought this little kit onion. I think this is the leak. And um, used the, the lock on it that slides up and over and uh, I think he closed it down on it and broke the tip off the knife. So I still have to take it apart and clean it up because it's got a lot of grit in it now. But put a new tip on this knife, sharpen a straight razor, um, sharpen one of the Farm Forge Stinger XLs, had a cup of coffee. So there's like three videos that I want to try and do today. At least three, um, maybe more. I started one yesterday and, and I'm going to put it in with this, but um, with this group of videos um, but I had told you guys that I had some knives that I would never get rid of and I said I was gonna do a video of the knives I would never get rid of and why why they specifically are gonna stay and so I got out the ones that are knives that right now are knives that I would never get rid of um, in in my current state of mind they're knives that I would never get rid of and for various reasons um, so we're gonna go ahead and get into that and if if this becomes a long video, we won't do it, but I also have a Tough Thumbs Tannic that's on loan that I'm going to talk about. Uh, <coughs> these are about $1,300, $1,400 right now on the secondary market. Um, hang on just a second. I think my daughter has something she'd like to say to me. So yeah, I've, sorry, she just just came up and it, it distracts me, so I wanted to do it over start, uh, tell her to you know get whatever she wanted out of her system because I'm doing this. Uh, Tough Thumbs Tantic. Uh, I don't know what model number this is. They go for about, like I said, about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars um, on a secondary market right now. Um, but that's the plain ones. This one's been highly modified. You know, Jeff started out as a knife pimper and uh, then decided to start making custom knives, which, as much as I, from what I understand, he's a really good guy. He's friends with Chris and Elliot up at Forge. It's kind of a good thing that he started making these other knives because apparently he had uh, screwed up some. There was one on the workbench at Chris and Elliot's shop that uh, that Jeff had modified for somebody and really it did a number on it. So not saying anything against this. I mean, this is a nice knife. This is well made. Um, it's not a design that I would want to use, but we'll, we'll get into that uh, after this. So knives that I will never part with, currently never part with. Um, there's a few of them here on the bench, and some of them, you know, like I said, they all have varying reasons as to why. Um, Irma has been downgraded to a Category 3 Storm now. Um, but, you know, a couple of them are for sentimental reasons. Well, three of them are for sentimental reasons. These are, these were all gifts. Elliot gave me this Predium. Uh, my friend Nico gave me this Fortis that I love um, and this was the first knife I ever was given it was a knife given to me by my father it's a Camelus Silver Sword model 42 and it's still ridiculous stupid sharp but there's there's different reasons why people hold on to knives and don't get rid of them so we're getting into that this, we'll start with this one this one was a little pocket knife that my father gave me I have a matter of fact I still have the cardboard box for this in a drawer in the house in Ohio that box that this came in um, I carried this knife for pretty much the entire time I was in the military. Um, I carried it in my pocket. I, I, I looked at it. I've been to 16% of the countries in the world, and this knife was in my pocket for the majority of those. Um, it's something I've never lost. It's something I've always had, and it was given to me because back then we were on a farm, and there was a lot of times that I needed a small little knife that was... Good enough for a you know a child to be able to skin a rabbit, uh, skin a squirrel, something like that, and it, it fit the bill. It's like kind of like a drop point, um, but now it's become an emotional thing, and it always let me, like I said in another video, it always let me carry a, a piece of home with me, and I did. I stabbed myself. I'm, I'm picking at a spot where I stabbed myself doing that, putting a tip on this knife for for Matt, um, but it allowed me to have a little piece of home that I took with me, no matter what country I was in. And so it's something that will never go away. It's something that's going to stay in my pocket forever. So along those lines um, is the next knife. 
and this is a Predium. This is number 11 of the run of 100 that Elliot did of the Predium. And uh, he hates this knife, he doesn't like it, but um, I was in the shop one day and I told him I wanted to, you know, I wanted something that I could show a, a from then to now um, video where I, I could use something that was not, didn't really reflect their current process and their current standing as to where they're at. And uh, he had thrown this away and I pulled it out of the trash and he goes, look, I'll tell you what, you can have that. And I mean, it's something that he didn't like, didn't want and gave it to, but the fact that he gave it to me is something, you know, I like Elliot, I, I like Elliot a lot, I respect him. He's taught me so much about knife making and things like that, that it's just, it's one of those things I'm gonna keep. And I would never give it away. It's it's in some of the best LMAX I've ever seen. Um, Chris Robinson, or Christopher Robinson, Williamson, which is his brother's full name, um, specifically told me that if I ever wanted to get rid of it, it needed to come back because he did not want it sold or anything like that because it's it's Elliot's LMAX, it's things like that. So it's one of those things that just would never, just because of the, the fact it was a gift, I wouldn't ever get rid of this. Um, like I said, still staying along those same lines is my Fortis. I fell in love with the Ferrum Forge Fortis a long time ago. There was a specific one that belonged to Mr. Robert Bodiger that I saw that I, I loved. And it was this blade finish, it was this handle finish, everything about this. And my friend Nico, knowing this, not even a birthday present or anything, it was just a gift because he felt like doing it, bought me a Ferrum Forge Fortis A with the blade, the blade finish that I love and everything's like that. And it's just the fact that he got this for me as a gift. I was ready to cry when he gave it to me. It was freaking amazing. Um, this won't ever go anywhere. This will be mine. It's gonna stay with me forever. And it is a gorgeous representation of when they made the shift from blocky and square to more refined from Fair and Forge. You're gonna notice there's a bunch of Fair and Forge knives in here. Well, three, three Farm Forge. So just to go along that is my Farum Forge Archbishop, which is a one-off. Um, Elliot sold this to me, person to person, sold it to me. Um, it never even made it to the website because I loved it and he allowed me to purchase it outright from him in the shop one night and I brought the money in and reason this would never go is I love the Archbishop. And this is the only one like this. There's one that's close that belongs to uh, our friend Bill Schaefer. He's a good friend of us guys out there. You know, all of us up there, we, we go up every Friday and hang out. So this would never go anywhere because I could never get this back. I had somebody offer me an immense amount of money for this compared to what I paid for it. And there is no way it's ever going to go. Sorry guys, this knife would never go. So here we, now we have two that are for different reasons. Chris Reeves Sabenza. Now I had a Sabenza before and I sold it. Um, Chris Reeves Sabenza has always been one of my, my favorite knives because it's just kind of elegant, elegantly simple. Um, I've had some issues with this knife, but they don't outweigh the quality of this knife. And I have, I've rectified the issues. I got the only thing I can't fix is the difference in the grind, which is enough that you can see it, you can significantly see it, but the fact of the matter, it's still an amazing knife. Uh, and there's a lot to be said for a knife that you can take apart, put it together, they send you the tools to do it. Um, fix the issue with the with the uh, washers, and I anodized it myself, and I had a friend made a lanyard for it for me. So I got rid of one once and immediately regretted my decision. So this is another knife that will stay with me. I'm always gonna have a Farm Forge, or I'm sorry, a Chris Reeves Sabenza. I'm always gonna have these three Farm Forge knives. There's a fourth coming, you guys will see it. I, I got a, a deal on it um, that I just couldn't pass up. And then in my entire case, there's there's other knives in there. There's, there's a bunch of knives in there. This one won't ever go away. And it's mainly because they don't make this style handle anymore. Um, and my daughter loves this, and I, I had three of these. I had this one, I had the bayonet grind, 
and I had the uh, dagger, the double edge. And the fact was, I didn't like, the, they were really hard to get sharp in the first place. The double edge and the bayonet were really hard to get sharpened because they were, you know, they had that, that ridge down the spine and then they came out and they were really narrow, so you had a hard time thinning that edge. And so this one, or the drop point, would be the ones that I would say would be the ones that make as much sense because you can get them. This thing is wicked sharp. Um, but they don't make this handle scales design anymore. They make one that looks like the tri-wing screws that are on a lot of their other knives. And when you have when you have um, a change like that, I didn't like it. And so now I don't have, I couldn't get another one that looked like this unless I bought it on a secondary market. And I got this one, this is April 2015 was when it was made. But I like the Ultratex. And um, I'm holding on to it because my daughter asked me to. So those are the knives that are in my case that never would go anywhere. Um, and just because they have that sentimental attachment on some of these doesn't mean they don't get carried. Um, as a matter of fact, I just had to touch up my Fortis this morning while I had the stones out. Um, and since it's my knife, I don't charge myself extra. I put it on my 12,000 grit. It is nasty sharp. Um, and it holds that edge really well. So since that was quick, that, that was kind of quick. That's I owed you guys that. There is going to be another video I'm going to try to do today uh, that I'm going to link Outdoors 55 on. I'm going to take a dull knife, find one around here somewhere, which is hard at my house to find a dull knife, and I'm going to sharpen it on the window of my Volkswagen. So keep that in mind that that one's coming too. This little thermos cup my wife bought me doesn't keep coffee very hot. So... That leaves us with this, the Tough Thumbs Tannic. Um, I don't know really what to say about this. It doesn't seem to me to be a very useful design knife. It feels like a, a tomahawk. Um, for me, it's not real comfortable. I don't know, you know, this point sits up here, but I will say that, let me pull it up so I can tell you what the steel is because I don't remember. I had pulled it up and was looking at it. Um, it is a custom knife that uh, Jeff was making. And so it is, handles are titanium. It doesn't say this, let's look at the details here. Let's get into the details on this knife. It is, um, yep, blade details, they do not have any blade material. I would assume by looking at it that it's steel. <laughs> Some manner of uh, steel that has been uh, tumbled. It's got, a, it's got a rock pattern on it. Um, it's got a rock pattern on the handle that's done almost in a starburst fashion. It has the cutout on the exterior of the lock bar. But, it's been smoothed pretty well. Um, you can tell that this is a handmade pocket clip. You can just see by looking at it. I did try to put it in a pair of pants. The lock, or not the lock, the pocket clip tension is really stiff. It's not something I would care. It's heavy. Huge pivot. Um, it's got a pretty good action to it for a heavy blade, but it's this weird design. It's such a straight here and then this big belly which could be useful, but the way that the handle's done, it's just, for me, I don't, I don't see it being a useful knife, but it is not an unattractive knife. But um, this is Elliot's knife. Now, what I would say is there's a lot of, and I will come back behind and show you what I'm talking about. Um, there's a lot of patterning in here but you can see where um there's a lot of the scratch pattern from a low grit belt in there which is not something that i find attractive but the flip side of this is i've seen a lot of uh jeff's knives since and they are they are a lot more refined this was one of his first outings into, this is an early, early 
um, custom from Jeff. But now I will say the edge grinds are done very well and very symmetrical and did a very good job of maintaining that, that secondary point on a Tanto that you would want for a snap cut. Now, that would do, that would be devastating, but it just feels to me like it would flip out of my hand. Um, but like I said, I tell you guys all the time, these are my opinions. I don't want you to think that this, I'm, I'm disparaging this knife. Um, it's well ground. There's only one little spot here that feels like there's a thickening in it, which I've hand ground some blades. I'm gonna tell you, it's hard. All of mine have that thickening where you, you miss it, like you put it in and you start working your way and there's always a thick spot somewhere in there where you don't take as much material off. Um, but I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a lot of, I don't have anything out here but a Ferrum Forge knife um, that really would have it. There's a lot of knives, this one doesn't have it, but um, my, oh, there's another knife that I forgot was in my pocket that would never go. My Entac. My Entac has got a, um, a, a thickening to it here. Um, but a lot of that has to do with just the design of the blade. So, knives that would never go anywhere. This one's included, I'm sorry. I forgot it was in my pocket. I like this so much that I, I bought my father one as a retirement gift. And uh, after he passed away, my mother is sending it to me and it's going to be my daughter's so that she can have something that belonged to her grandfather. And hopefully that winds up being like this because he bought me this I bought him one of these and if it's something that she carries I would love her to some people are like oh you're gonna get your daughter the knife bug and I was like you know thinking about it of all the things that she could get hooked on this isn't a bad one all the things that she could wind up picking up from me as a as a habit <laughs> this one is not a bad one so it kind of runs in the family. My dad, it was very unusual to see him with, without at least three or four pocket knives. Um, I come by it honest. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's just the, the knives that I wouldn't get rid of and the Tough Thumbs Tannic, which looking at it as a piece of art, it's, that's what, that's what a lot of, a backspacer. I didn't show you guys a backspacer. The backspacer. Backspacer is a piece of brass that then he ground out and sculpted, and you can see air through it in several places, but you can tell he made it to, to size and then adjusted it. That really hurts. I jammed that knife pretty far into my hand. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much done sharpening for the day. If you guys like my videos, please like and subscribe. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, if you are liking my videos, I've talked to a couple other YouTube creators. It helps get my, the more likes a video has, the easier it is for, um, it to get carried over to other channels and get seen again. And I would love to, we hit a thousand subscribers. Um, I did the giveaway. I still have to give, I have to get that knife packed up and, and sent out to him. So I will be letting you guys know the status of that and I will let I will email him and let him know that it is coming his way I just I've been busy and haven't had a chance spent the whole day yesterday with the wife and kid so all right yeah that's pretty much it guys um I'm gonna talk about something in a at the end of this I'm just gonna throw it up at the end it was originally supposed to be like a vlog video but I, I just didn't I didn't get enough stuff videotaped for it but uh that's gonna be the end of the video and I will come in behind that and uh tell you guys goodbye so guys um this is just real quick a video uh so the the giveaway knife i still have to get it out and send it to uh to our winner in england so the winner of my giveaway is about was in england so i have to send that off to uh to james uh but this was about videos like this which is kind of just like a little vlog where I'm doing goofy stuff and things like that spending time well the last one I put up was me and my best friend Clint drinking that's, that's a weird video it, it was it was a weird video because I was already drunk when I decided to make it and I had um, I mean it was a, it was just something I want to do so I wanted to tell you guys like some people don't like they don't like it's like oh that's why are you putting this up here's the thing some of my favorite YouTube channels are YouTube channels like 
demolition ranch, off the ranch, where it's not just somebody trying to cut my wife off. So they're not, they're not, they're not channels that are one dimensional. Oh, they're closed. They're closed. Yeah, Kmart's closed. I told you I didn't figure it was gonna be there. So those channels aren't one dimensional. They're not just locked into one thing. I don't want it, this channel to be a single facet thing. So there's other things that I'm gonna do just to to add content and lighten. Don't pull in front of that cop. Go, go, go. If you're gonna do it, go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so with that being said, if you guys don't like all of the content, just don't watch those videos. Yeah. Don't go and tell me that you're gonna unsubscribe because the channel doesn't have anything to offer for you anymore. Well, that's, I don't always do a knife video every week. I've done a lot of Instagram live feeds and things like that. So, you know, it's just, if you do want to unsubscribe, just don't tell me. Because here's the thing, I'm not gonna change the content that a thousand viewers seem to enjoy for an individual. And that's one of the things about YouTube. I, I, I put up this channel, a lot of people watch it. People actually pay into my Patreon, which still is going on by the way, and basically are paying to watch content. You can't, you can't just call, it's not like you can just call the TV station on a channel that you don't like and be like, hey, I didn't like that last show you ran. So, you know, it's that's one of those weird things about Instagram. You guys have access to me, which is pretty cool. It actually is cool. But the flip side of it is that I get a lot of garbage comments. <laughs> if you follow the, the comments, I get a lot of garbage comments. Um, because people will take snippets and try and tw twist things around. And like I've said a bunch of times, I am not responsible. I'm only responsible for what I say, not what you heard. So it's just, it's just, there's going to be some stuff I throw in, you know, we spent the day together. I didn't do anything. I was going to go make some knives and I just didn't even go to Chris and Elliot's. I went to the knife shop last night and hung out, but I didn't work on any knives. I was still in my suit. I forgot to take all of my clothes that I needed to change into. So well, we're just spending the afternoon doing a little bit of shopping. Hi, huh, Isabel. So, all right guys, I will, uh, I'll, I'll get this thrown in somehow mixed in with something i still got some other stuff that i still need to make videos of so all right guys later hey guys yeah so that's that's kind of something i just wanted to throw out there for you guys uh but um i filmed that yesterday and i had intentions to do some other stuff and i just never got around to it but uh so i've got some other videos that are going to probably be up later today so i will talk to you guys for you guys it may seem momentarily but for me it's going to take a little bit so you guys take it easy and i will see you next time